Richard O'Connor is my guest here on Going Beyond. He makes for a most interesting guest indeed, and I'm sure you're going to agree with me on that one. Now, Richard, we were talking about, you know, you were talking about books and you were talking about all the stuff that you do. What about uh, your events and things like that? Do you ever see yourself kind of going into that as an area of activity? Would you like to do that sort of thing? Well, I would like to do it as a hobby. Let's say there's, there's an event happening that I feel requires to be taken to the next level. And I feel connected to it in some way. And I feel that, yes, I need to help these organizers take this to the next level. Mm -hmm. In all humility. Okay. It's, it's I would chip in. You, yes, you I would certainly take to it. But yes, uh, not, not as of now, I don't consider it as, as a profession. Right. Talking about profession, have you ever thought of broadcasting as a profession? A good voice, personality and everything else that it probably takes. Haven't really, Jennifer, to be frank. Really? Thank you for the compliment, but <laughs> I have not really thought of it. Or the idea, <laughs> the idea, the suggestion. It sounds good, really, but I've never been a journalistic type of person in the sense of reporting, inquiring, chasing after an event. Maybe it's there, but I've not really thought Pursuit. of myself in those terms, really. Mm, okay. Thank I can, you. But you, but you do. You've written articles. I've read some of those. Uh, what about? Um, do you do you contribute? Do you find yourself contributing to other, you know, periodicals or newspapers and things like that? Have you considered that, or have you done that already? That I don't know about. No, not really. I've not. I've not ventured into that that area. I've not written in newspapers. Yes. So. so why, Richard <coughs> O'Connor, have you got this very narrow point of view when it comes to something that you like doing and something that you're good at? Now, I'm not meaning to flatter you here, but I am saying that when you've got it in you, why don't you give it a try? I will. I will. I'll. I'll I need to make up for the for the lost <laughs> years, really. <laughs> There's plenty yes, of because, years. Yes, because we, you see, we've, we've got a, f you know, we've got a career going, and there's so much happening there. And there's sometimes we work, uh, you know, night shifts, and so when you're at home, you're asleep, and you, when you're awake, you're at work. You know, when you're when you're at, on field for me, at mm. field cutting edge postings. So <coughs> there are there are some situations where you don't, then you feel that you know we'll we'll just put this on the back burner for some time, and then mm -hmm. take it up later. Right. I'm confident that. Uh, right. Let me ask you in terms of your own work and your 9 to 5 job. I, I'm not asking you about details or anything like that. But uh, do you find that in there, there is a scope for some of these other activities related to your department? I mean. Oh, well, yes. In fact, do you write, for instance, for your office journal or for any of the other activities uh, that I've happen done. there? In fact, I've written in the past, I've written the disposal manual for the department, All India, you know. Mm -hmm. So we, we, you know, there are goods that are seized, there are goods that lie unattended or unclaimed, and then all these have to be disposed. You've got perishables, then you've got electronic goods, which again are perishables, because in, in six months' time... Uh, Obsolete and gone. Uh, gone. So then, but when there are court cases going on simultaneously, so what, how does one address these issues? So these are things... You know, a few years back, we really got down to it. I sat with uh, with the senior officer in the department, and we really came out with a manual which was sent to Delhi to the board. And That's very good. Is it actually being used? Uh, well, it's being updated. It is being used, oh. and it, it gets updated every. So that's few the first years. book, then, <laughs> in a way, in a way, isn't it? Uh, you could say so. You right. could say so. Other activities, Richard, I know I've gone through so much. I've gone through writing, I've got through, gone through presenting, I've gone through documentaries, I've gone through a lot. But I, I have a feeling as we sit here today that there's something else I don't know about you. Oh, well, have you discovered yourself really? Well, sometimes when I'm in a melancholy or in a mellow mood, if I could say so, I just take out the harmonica, sit, sit on my terrace and just play a tune to myself. Okay. So I do that, but I've not come out with it, but I sometimes do that. So is this I a secret that I'm being told <laughs> here because I didn't know this, having known you for a long time. Oh my, I should have brought it along now <laughs> with me. I know, me. we could have had a little musical interlude in here. <laughs> okay, at what point in your, in your life and in your career do you see yourself, uh, you know, doing all of these things that you really like? on a much more full-time basis. Do you see this five years down the road uh, or? I, I think I wouldn't wait too long, maybe maybe two years down the road. 
All right. At most. What's what's the one thing then you would plunge into? It will be writing, Jennifer. Really? Most certainly, yes. <clears throat> That's my first love. Is it? This is very, <laughs> very interesting. Okay, so then do you have the time to actually um, pursue some of the writers that you like and the people who you're fond of reading? Have you been able to find the time for that? Uh, well, I do sometimes attend literary festivals and you have the Hindu festival which happens here and then uh, some of these universities, they have the writers coming over and uh, not, not necessarily writers, eminent personalities and we try to attend that and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, get a feel of, 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 of their lives and how they go about doing things and in ma many ways appreciating the kind of work they do. Mm -hmm. You seem to have a general overall interest in a lot of what's going on around you. Uh, and now I'm just thinking that uh, what else can I see you doing? I'm sure there's something that I'm not getting at, Richard, here. Tell me, tell me. Is oh, there any well. sports? Is there any other activity? Is there any, uh, you know, apart from community, you know, involvement? Is there anything else? Well, my bucket list is very limited, uh, Jennifer. Really? I'd rather do books, uh, books, and books. No, I'd rather do something, do one thing, and do it well. Well, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to spread myself too thin. Now, uh, I'm interested to ask this question because there's a lot of you know, interaction with with members of the public. So, how do you handle that? Do you think it's being done right? Uh, well, <coughs> the department has come a long way, really. Indeed, I've noticed that. Yes, there are lots of efforts to improve the public image and not only that see earlier it was seen as an enforcement uh, department you know but today it's a facilitator so trade facilitation helping the business community doing their their trade with ease so the whole focus has changed especially after liberalization in the 1990s Fine. and uh, officers are called upon to perform really so in the years gone by, I remember one was almost terrified of coming back to India after a trip because you thought you looked on the customs officer as a nasty at the airport waiting to nail you for some little insignificant thing that was in your suitcase. And now I find that it's very easy going, it's very gentle, it's very um, pleasant, it's almost pleasant I would say that you don't have to have this, uh, you know, fear inside you that you're coming back to India and what are they going to take out of my suitcase that's not, not right or shouldn't be there and I like that so is this a conscious effort on the part of the department to to project this friendlier face in a way yeah we have traveled a long way really uh, because lots of controls have been lifted because in the past you had a passenger coming in would have to pay a duty rate of 345 percent it was, it was percent. ridiculous it was yes. ridiculous yes and uh, even the women wearing the jewelry. It used you, to be you, terrible. Uh, you, you can ha there was only that much, you know, imagine wearing jewelry up to 40,000 rupees. What's 40,000 rupees? Nothing. Hardly a few grams, no. Um, so, the rules have changed. There's more public awareness today. Every citizen is conscious of his or her rights. True. And the shoe is really on the other foot. And today the customer officer standing there has to has to face an, a very enlightened citizenry who know who know what uh, what is expected, what the rules are, and uh, and uh, what are the rights yes, really? Yes, indeed, I really like that. All power to the customs department. Uh, I, I I'm sure they'll just get better and better. And all power to you, Richard O'Connor. It's been wonderful to talk to you. I'm really grateful for your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. The pleasure <laughs> thank was mine. You very much indeed. Well, that's all we have time for here on Going Beyond. It was wonderful that you could join us on this program. Remember that we'll always have interesting people for you, people who really have a story to tell us. And really, at the end of the day, that's what life is all about. So until the next time, you take care. Bye for now.